All right, so <laughs> another installation has come to the end. Um, this time I've done something for Easter just because I was so bored. So, <laughs> so since, since I finished the, the Christmas one, I was just like thinking about like how oh, Easter and already now I'm already thinking about Halloween. So, you know, <laughs> we can think like we can discuss that, that later. But, um, yeah, a number of viewers well, should be more than the ideas, but yeah, I will talk about the ideas, the sketch schematic test, and how everything kind of get together. So the basic idea was to learn from my past installations, which was mostly from the Christmas one, where I've seen how people react when they get offered to something to like to, to accomplish a task. And I thought the first Christmas one was like you know a big red glowing button, you know, people just smash it, that's it. Like they, they will they, they won't be afraid of it. People got wrong, people were stepping on the actual game or then pressing the button, even after reading the instruction, who knows why, but human nature it's weird, everyone is different, everyone you know can solve puzzle in a different way, from way, probably. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I try to make it more, you know, open, more, more easy to accomplish, more, you know, you just jump on it and you do something. And of course, more durable because the button that I had used before. It was, I mean, it's still here. I still have it, it still works, but it was getting like wet and it was triggering the, the it was basically short in the cables. So it wasn't really waterproof. So yeah, I needed something with a bit more waterproof and also that can withstand kids smashing it with the hand or with the foot. So let's see, maybe we can create like a dance you know, game, like something like, I mean, not a dance game, but using the platform as an inspiration, how to make stuff more durable and more easy to, you know, to interact with the with thing. Because Christmas once people were just stepping on the game, and were like, what the fuck? <laughs> so, you know, that's getting their mind. So that's maybe make something they can step on it rather than pressing. So I thought like, you know, let's make like a sort of a, a memory game, but that you can stand on it. So there was going to be like different um, um, screens in, a, in each like zone, and you just step on it. You kind of flip the card, it match the card with a memory game, you know, red to red, blue to blue, and so on. But then again, what about uh, the aspect of safety? If I create a platform and then people step on it and then just fall off. I have probably have to pay them, like I have to pay for damage of themselves, like, you know, liability in a way. So I kind of like ask a, a coworker of mine, which is a creative. And I do like, look at the space that's, you know, play something around the place, but nothing that is kind of like, you know, different levels. I think about Chris, like Easter. Easter is about kind of like also rabbits. So it's kind of a bit more hunting stuff, like eggy. So it needs to be kind of like a, a kind of rabbit hole. Rabbit holes maybe with a screen inside, maybe. And then, you know, like kind of like thinking about a bit more. So maybe creating like rabbit holes where I got screen side, creating a fake grass and so on, and created Doom as well. And then that's gonna be what kind of like clicked. So creating like rabbit holes, like eight of them in a fake grass, which is will be safe for people to step on it. People should not trip over because they just like, you know, the, the sort of like small, Rays from the grass, and in theory, if I just 
if it, if a design only one zone to kind of step on it, it should be fine. So down to the schematics. So I have to think how to build this stuff. What what do I build? So what I wanted is creating a dispenser that will dispense a reward. So I reuse what Christmas what what I've done for Christmas, and I kind of rework it to dispense creamy egg and put so many these. The master screen will be also do the dispensing stuff. And, and then a secondary screen will take care of the sound. This because the master doing the LEDs could not cope with the sounds via the Jack Audio. I don't know if people probably seen my, my post, but yeah, that's the way that the Pi runs the LEDs are, I think, interference with this audio driver or audio codec. I didn't put in details. I just kind of like understood, okay, it's not possible. Oh, it's possible, but it's too much work. I have like way to deal with that. So, I say like, let's move the sound to another Pi and then that's it. And so I had a, an array of eight Pi's, zero, all wireless connected to my network. Each Pi will, will talk to the master over OSC as a communication protocol. Um, the idea here is to have each Pi to send a signal that has been triggered, but the master will tell each screen to display something. So everything is a slave, except for the master that decide what to do. This because some Pi could potentially fail and then you just get stuck in one screen and I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to be a master that had a big timeout, and it would just trigger all of them to go back to idle and so on. So I got a bunch of pies. I actually got eight. There's just a bit of them. I actually was very lucky to have a, a small partnership with RS components. So I got a bunch of stuff. I still wonder what I need to make to them to kind of like say thank you. I Ask them, they never replied, but they gave me some free stuff. I got Tupperware <laughs> to, to kind of like minimize my cost in uh, expensive enclosure. So this survived the rain and kind of people step on it. So I built all of them. I got eight screens, um, AV input because the HDMI screens were just adding up too much cost. And because each Pi in Pi Zero cannot put AV output. So I, saw, I thought like, let's just do it. Let's just, you know, use that, you know, output and lower down the cost and still have an image out of the Pi's. And then I hotwired in a way, um, the voltage inside or then just using like um a usb and then kind of like taking you know spices and so on i basically google it which kind of pads underneath will be like the five volt intake yeah some people will say some of them i think the pi four bypass the fuse but i have no idea if the pi zero bypass the fuse so you have to be cautious if you do something like that, that your five volts is actually the correct voltage around and at a stable voltage. So you don't damage the Pi, the SD card, and any hardware that's connected. I'm lucky, I guess. I got good stuff. I also got good stuff from RS components as a voltage regulator because everything was powered by 12 volts and then stepped down to five volts for the Pi's. 
And then also one big thing was the donations because last time I ran the donation on Twitch, but people didn't get it. So I got a Zito. I had to create a bespoke application on Android from the SDK because I want something that trigger every single time five or two pounds to be like asked because otherwise it goes in timeout and just goes like welcome. So I took the example, I kind of like tweaked a bit a bit the code and then I managed to request every like minute to display a two pounds request. And I had to create a case. So some thinking like, you know, create a box on top of the dispenser to show a sign and so on. So I had a kind of thinking about how to display and where to place it. And then I made something. It's ugly. It was functional. It was watertight. But yeah, it was ugly. <laughs> and I had like a little bit of signing to kind of tell what, you know, to what to do, like please, you know, tap it or device scan a QR code, which eventually it was, you know, I got very good, like, you know, um, experience. I had a lot of donation via the touch, you know, contactless device, which was great. So, you know, if anybody wants to do something similar, I already recommend to do that. So back to the building of the whole thing. So the idea is to create a memory game with the help of my creative guy. I basically got a video, a render video of like a bunny and the bunny was just gonna to hold a, an egg and each egg will be like different colors. So you have to basically match the color of the egg holding. So some fiddling around with um, boots.txt, I think it's called, to get the right kind of like ratio and uh, stop the flickering over the AV output, just because it's not obvious to kind of set up all the stuff. And then I got something there. I wanted to use Pi game to output the video, but the frame buffer hack is not really working anymore. I mean, it's sort of working, but it's not really working. <laughs> so I fell back to OMX player with a Python kind of hookup library and it worked. Here, like a simple test of two uh, screens connected to a pressure mat. So you can see like them jumping up and down. There is no sound yet, just because it was not there, the, the secondary pie that was playing sound. But by step on it, you can see that the bunny is jumping up and down. And then here, another one that you can see. You can see the sound, I mean, you can hear the bad, but you can see the setup is getting a bit more, you know, in good shape. Another test over here. There was a little bit of delay just because I'd seen some errors like triggering the stuff by mistake. So I had to kind of get um, a bit of a, make sure that someone is step on it. And also the Omex player has it's a bit fiddly to kind of like skip between the videos. And it was a bit, sometimes a bit slow to kind of like seek to the right point to play. But eventually, you know, the experience is there. Uh, oh, next. And that basically was kind of the video that I got. This was the idol. This was the coming up with a color. It's another color and so on. I think I don't have the one with the X in a, in a tick, but um, yeah, that was basically the whole video. And I just was picking the right timing, what to what to play when it was pressed or when 
the screen was supposed to be idle. Next. So next to the DIY, um, I needed to create a sort of like enclosure for the screens just to make them waterproof in a way, but also like people poking inside and to create kind of the shape, the shape of like the, the kind of doom shape. I thought to put also a compost bag on top, but I eventually didn't do it just because it was too much puff. And the result was quite okay in the end. But yeah, I, I basically, I used the critic of the Christmas game. I cut it off and then I put it up on the, on the boots. I put a lot of silicone around <laughs> and I made a big mess, but yeah, I, I sort of like tried to treat the wood to kind of last a little bit longer. And yeah, for that side it was done. But then it came the idea of the dispenser, how to create a dispenser for egg. Going around, I could see like if you create like if you're carving off like some channels you can make something cool. So I went to BMQ, I got some table chisels and I tried to carve some like curve inside a piece of wood. It took me like ages, probably like two days. So you can see kind of the result. And that was kind of the idea to get like three slopes and dropping down. So I had to buy about 40 eggs and it will be kind of like loaded and then Will be enough. More carving, and then I say, "Fuck that!" He didn't really work. That I mean, it worked, but there was so much carving, it was not very really precise. So what I ended up to do is to put a piece of wood, and then another piece of wood on the side to create kind of a slope, smoother slope, and also like looking pretty okay. And that's where it was going to be. And that's kind of like work in progress to kind of make it a bit less ugly. So yeah. And then the idea is to create something that pushed the egg out every single time so that it dispenses an egg. So that was the idea. Get a servo, get a slider from a draw slider, and then get this kind of effect. So we we'll attach the slider. Egg comes out, push it down, goes in the hole, and that's it. And yeah, I hope that I had a little helper as well. Thank God it didn't get any white or even blacker. It was pretty smart. It don't get like in the way in the paint. And this was like the final result of the dispenser with the slope and kind of slider. I also got the fake grass. That was kind of like a surprise to kind of like deal with that. And then it was time to kind of get everything together. So after all the coding was done, I was happy with that. I went outside, I placed the grass, I placed all the um, pressure sensor down. I kind of positioned them underneath the grass. I put all the screens there, well, enclosure. And then I got my bumpy, grassy stuff <laughs> with screens. And the final result was kind of this, like I spray paint disposable ones, like it was not permanent. And the location where they have to step on it, some instructions, some the screens are on and so on. And yeah, and then during night actually was pretty decent. During the day, it was like not very good because the screen are not very bright. Uh, and yeah, this kind of was the final result. Screens showing the little rabbit and the final, you know, set up with the eggs. Many, many eggs, more eggs, and then special one for Easter. So I wanted to give like some special ones like Kinder eggs. And 
a small basket just to kind of create the final effect where to pick up the egg, you know, so copy safe. I had many, many eggs in my house, some donations, some I had to buy. It was fun. And that was kind of like the final result. So you get there, you step on it. You can see the sound, I mean, you can hear a bit. So you had like different sound where if you match it, you get a, a tick. If you didn't match it, you get a but bad sound. And also you had the visual tick as well. And eventually, when you finish, like when you actually win, uh, take some time because I have to cut the video, I didn't do it. That was kind of like final result, like Super Mario Bros. stuff. And again, from another angle. <laughs> Where is this on the end? Oh, it's the end. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> Any questions? So, how do those pressure sensors actually work? Do you just um, hook them up to GPIO and. Uh, yeah, you so what you do is basically. It's kind of it acts like a like a button. So as soon as you step over it, it breaks two cables together. So what I've done, I, I create a pull up resistor just to. I mean, I, I think the Pi now has a pull up integrated, but I've just done it for the sake of it. And I connected one cable to the GPO and one to do the pull up. So when it was, I think, when it was not pressed, it was one, and when it was pressed, it was zero. And they work quite reliably. Did they have any, any issues with them? Yeah, it was pretty good. Like, I was pretty impressed. Like, I didn't have, like, any false positive. I also integrated, like, a, a, a keyboard uh, Easter egg code inside where if you stand over two pads for like an X amount of time, it will be becoming like a keyboard, like playing piano stuff. So you could just play a song for like an hour, for a minute. But also I discovered that people are not very bright. So I had, they could not figure out to match the, the bunny colors. Even if I eventually integrated a audio sound file, which it says like yellow, green, blue. So you had a visual and also sound, but still didn't, didn't get how to match them together. Even if it was like, it was written, it was visual, it was sound, but still didn't get it. So therefore, uh, after the second day, I just said like, fuck it. Like after like 30 seconds you play, no matter if you, finish or not, you just win. So people were happy, <laughs> even because people were giving up or didn't get it. So they were just getting eggs. So <laughs> I think I gave away 300 eggs in the end. So it was pretty big. It's a lot of eggs. Yeah. Cosmo cool. beat in, in, in the UK. Yeah, actually, sure. shops sure. kind of ran out of eggs. Probably people were coming to my house just to get an egg for, for that thing. Yeah, I'm really going to get a walk. I still have to do the video. Like, I, I need to do don't know, like another 10 days of videos from my doorbell. And then I will potentially, in a couple of days, create like a, like, like I did for Christmas, like a, a sort of like experience feeling, like, how people react with that and how it was built. Um, but yeah. 
Yeah, and eventually, so, yeah. I also raised about 200 pounds for the charity, which was good. Oh, yeah. Just going to say, you're, you're, you must be getting very famous in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, like people were like, oh, yeah. Like the, the postman, like, oh, another one. <laughs> and everyone's kind of like very supportive in a way. Like they, they like to, to see some, some new things happening in the streets. And even like, you know, with COVID, so people like kids are happier. So, yeah. I got yeah. good response, like, good thing. If you keep it up, you'll have, you'll have a huge lineup in front of your house. Yeah. I don't know if someone brought any question, but. Any other questions? No. <laughs> and next watch question is really good. Looking forward to seeing the video of the review. Yeah, I mean, it will take some time. I, I'm pretty slow. <laughs> Very cool. I, I really liked your um, your egg dispensing mechanism. Actually, it worked. It seemed like it worked really well. Yeah, I mean, like it was hard to kind of like come up with an idea where it would not smash the egg, but it will slowly poking out from the from the slope. The slope also didn't really work hundred percent. Sometimes the second slope will not push down the egg, so I need to kind of like um, shake it a bit sometimes. But poking out the egg, it was fine to, in the system. I mean, it was clunky, but it just worked. Yeah, Tony always says all the mechanical stuff always breaks. Electronics is always fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I just got to like, I didn't know how to uh, kind of secure the, the server, so I just got an L, a black, an L, held bracket shape, and then just screw some screw inside, put some cable ties. I was about to put some, like a, a gigantic blob of hot glue just to keep it in place, but <laughs> the bracket kind of did the job. And yeah. It just always amazes me how many, how many different skills you have to do, you have to have just to build something like that. You know? Yeah. Mostly it was sometimes, the, the harder point was to deal with the OMX player because, of, well, I, I wanted to kind of like, show the right video at the right time. But if you mm -hmm. cut off your videos in the, in files, you have to kind of load the videos and you have, you have a blank screen of the loading screen. So what I, not, and what I ended up to do is to create one on the video and then stick between the video. And that did the, did the job. But also I was very disappointed to know that the frame buffer trick didn't work anymore. So yeah. So my future pie game stuff, they're basically dead, I guess. So I guess your next your next thing is, is Halloween again, is it? Yeah, um, I probably want to create a gigantic pumpkin with LEDs and then playing, like making a mouth playing by the sound, like play some kind of Halloween sound and then they're just gonna like you know, kind of sink it in a way. But yeah, it's a long way, but yeah, I, I'm thinking ahead a bit. We're starting to have a lot of, a lot of equipment, so you can uh, <laughs> you know, just take whatever you already have and, and re re repurpose it. Yeah, I mean, I have repurposed some like the Pi to become CCTV cameras with motion OS. Um, which is fine. I mean, they're not that great just because the Pi Zero doesn't have much processing power. So I might make them slave and create a emotionless server on, on another PC. So I got more power to kind of like do the, the motion detection. But yeah, doing the Pi kind of like sitting here doing nothing. Cool. Well, thanks very much, Christian. It's really good. No worries.